Yeah, we're back at the home gym, bring you another upper body workout. Starting with the decline bench press. Three plates for three sets of eight to nine. I end up getting nine, eight, eight, which I'm really happy with because this is only my second time ever doing this exercise. But what do I always tell you? Strength is strength. And realistically, this angle is not that different from a competition style bench press as viewed by the range of motion. I thought it was gonna be a lot more partial, but look at that arm angle in the bottom. Not bad whatsoever. Plus, with your feet anchored down, you got something that's real stable. Overall, these feel phenomenal and will really bias that lower chest, such that you got that popping action in a t-shirt. Now, compared to weighted dips, the hypertrophy results should be rather similar, just that these are significantly easier on the shoulders, therefore being a better option for most lifters. And I personally plan on doing a lot more of these, not only with the barbell, but also heavy dumbbells, even with accommodating resistance. So overall, we have another variation that allows us to go heavy, but isn't as taxing on recovery. And right now, I'd say I'm probably good for four plates. What do you guys think? So there's the final rep. Look at that grind. That's another thing. It's easier to strain because your hips are already propped up. It's like when you have your butt off the bench. Next, we got the anterior delt press. And the reason why it's called this is because you're not 100% vertical. That's why you get a better lengthening effect on your front delt. In terms of weights used, it won't be that different, but you certainly feel the stretch. And it's easier to strain at the top because your leverages are optimized. It's like you leaning back on an overhead press. So here we're doing 190 pounds, three sets of five to seven, all to failure. Which if I'm being honest, I tell you to leave a rep in the tank because these sets will drain you. That's how I felt. And you can even see on this one, I ended up misgrooving a little bit. So unless you got real high work capacity and you're used to straining, man, don't go all out like this. It's not worth it. See, that's what happens when you go to failure. Your following sets aren't gonna be as good. But yeah, I'm getting pretty darn strong at these. I feel like I got the movement dialed in. About a month ago, I wasn't even able to grind. So it's like I said in the recent video, give yourself a few weeks and you'll be matching your original pressing numbers. These really are low skill while at the same time being easier on the rest of your body so you got more energy to strain on your rows and all that good stuff now we're doing feet up dumbbell flies which you probably thought you were never gonna see on this channel but hey i'm all about learning experimenting eliminating black and white thinking what i could tell you is that ever since i started using gymnastic rings doing flies with that my perspective has changed i feel like isolation work is not a bad thing and in particular if I'm not doing three presses in a session and I want a bit more chest volume, what's an efficient way to do it? Well, by making my leverages so bad that my arms are practically straight like this while getting a super deep range of motion in the bottom. Obviously, not getting a superior stretch. It's just getting a comparable stimulus to doing a heavier dumbbell press, but my shoulders and triceps are less involved. That's it. And of course, the biceps do assist in some stabilization. Now, you might notice that I don't have my arms completely flared out to the sides. That's a good way of wrecking your rotator cuff, in my opinion, even though we can adapt these positions. You want to keep somewhat of a tuck, and if you can, actually use an underhand grip, which will involve the upper chest a little bit more. But with these Olympic dumbbells, probably not going to happen. And I do prefer this slightly neutral grip where the dumbbells are kind of in a V formation, but not too much. But yeah, these will hit your chest in the lengthened position, which not only builds resilience for benching, but is most conducive to hypertrophy. Next, we got the spreader pull down. Of course, I got my tank inside out because that's a bad habit. Look at those freaking delts, my arms, my upper back. Everything's looking swole, making all kinds of gains. And I'm using 200 pounds for this workout. You guys remember at the start of the year, actually in December, I was doing 165. Well, look how far we came. Couldn't even do four plates. Now we're even beyond my body weight. So the gains have been real. I think you could see that visually. I'm in a fluffier state, yet definition still seems to be on point. Not that fat reduction is a possibility, but you get so jacked that the fat distributes to a larger surface area. So this is my go-to lat developer. And just so you know, this is more of a width session as opposed to thickness. And you can even see with the attachment itself, I have it in a somewhat underhand position instead of being flared out, which gives my arm angle an even more tuck position. So you feel the lats a bit more, but of course, you're not gonna disengage your upper back completely. And when you get strong, you're gonna have a little bit of cheap form, which I'm starting to notice now. So I think five plates is where I might cut things off. 
Then to finalize the back, we do some one arm pull downs, which you might think is the same movement, but it's not. Because I'm bringing my arm inwards, I'm using the rib cage as leverage. So the lats wrap around, you get more of a stretch in the lengthened position. And what I found is that this is the best way to do it at home because a lot of biomechanics experts will say, just position your body completely sideways and grab onto the rack. Thing is, I've tried that and you can't go heavy because you're limited by stability. You need to have a really good setup in order to pull that off, like with handles popping out or something where you can keep your body weight stationary. So that's why I prefer something like this, which is a lot more stable and I can still bring the arm across the body to a certain extent. Obviously, it's not perfect. I can definitely get more of a stretch, but how much of a stretch do you really need is the question. Like I certainly felt my lats. I like the fact that progressive overload is easy to achieve here. So it's not just about having the best movement pattern. There's gotta be scalability and being easy to set up of all things. So yeah, here's the finale. It's actually the second clip. Just going back and forth to give you a different viewing experience. I did three sets. As you can see, I'm using straps as well. Not because I need it, but because why not? I'm not trying to tax my grip. And I'm gonna need that energy for those curls later because I'm starting to get really fatigued this far into the session. Like just off those presses and flies, I was already feeling it, not gonna lie. And for those asking like, why are you not doing the push pull setup anymore? It's because I lose my groove, man. Even though it's optimal, I prefer just doing everything one shot, you know what I'm saying? But what I can say is I don't like doing the triceps at the end like this. So I might have to modify that, but check it out, right? We got the top down extension. This is my favorite way of hitting the long head of the triceps. The only limitation is the weight used. So I tried doing two plates. I'm obviously able to extend my arms, but the problem is I can't maintain that position because it's pulling me back. So I would actually have to wear a belt with a heavy ass loading pin underneath me. And that could be a little bit annoying to set up. I don't want to bring my other one because it's already got those 200 pound plates on there. So you might find that at some point you just won't be able to do these anymore. You're gonna have to high rep it like me. Not that this is a bad thing though, because for hypertrophy, proximity to failure is what matters. And I get 15, I think I got 12 on the second set and then eight over here. So you're gonna lose performance real quick and I'm still in that effective zone for hypertrophy. So not particularly stressed that I can't go heavier, but there will come a point where I'm gonna have to swap this out for something else or weigh myself down. Regardless, these feel great on the elbows, awesome stretch. I even hold at the bottom right here, you know, DC style. That's it, we finish off with the incline dumbbell curl. As you can see, I'm really weak on these because minimalism doesn't work. If you think that just getting a strong weighted chin up is gonna guarantee strong biceps, you're greatly mistaken. You might be like me that ends up with a massive back, but weak and frail arms. Like how many guys can match me on this? I'm sure it's a ton of you. So that's why these biceps gotta come up. Probably one of my worst body parts to be honest. It's not normal that I have this level of performance on compounds, yet my isolation sucks balls. So we're gonna correct it. Pretty uh, good incline angle as you can see. I'm going to failure. With the Olympic dumbbells, the arms are gonna be more flared out to the side. So I would say that it probably makes it a little bit harder than being more in a tuck position. And obviously you want a deep range of motion at the bottom. Don't be doing these half reps. The length and position is where you're gonna grow most of your size to begin with, all right? This is the effort I'm putting in, you see it. I think I prefer the dumbbells just because it fits my anthropometry better. As I've gotten bigger, finding the bar form is looking weirder, but with these, it's a bit cleaner. Obviously not perfect, as you can see, like the, the shoulders are gonna raise a bit, but it's what it is, guys, so. That's about it, awesome workout, intense, to the point, very basic. I hope you give it a shot, and I'll see you all in the next one.